Welcome, everyone. This is the Appian 23.2 product announcement webinar. My name is Malcolm Ross, Senior Vice President of Product Strategy at Appian. I'm joined here today by Sahithi Mankala, our product manager, Gabby Rothschild, product manager level two, Frank Lee, manager of product management, and April Schupel, our senior product evangelist. Today, we're going to be covering all the new features and capabilities being introduced in Appian 23.2. But before I get into the content, I'd like to first, of course, say how, what a great time it was in San Diego two weeks ago, meeting everyone in person, and of course, sharing some of the latest innovations that Appian's been coming out with, as well as some great content there from both our partners and customers. Thank you so much for those of you who managed to attend. We had a great conference and a conference party, as you can see here. We had thousands of attendees, which was the largest in-person Appian World event ever so far. So it's great to see our community growing and everyone sharing their stories and networking and learning things from that conference. If you happen to miss that conference, we certainly do invite you also to check out some of those recordings of the Appian World Conference that are now available on Appian.com. So I'm going to send out an offer right now to everyone. Go ahead and check those out on our Appian World website. Check out all the replays, the keynotes, the latest product announcements. And if you missed the sessions, some of preview of what's coming out, not only in our 23.3 release, but also in future releases of the Appian product, which we'll see a little bit today as well. But the next chance to meet with us also in our next major conference will be the Appian Europe. Now, we do intend to plan regional user groups as well throughout the entire world. But the second largest event next to Appian World is our Appian Europe conference. So I encourage you to save that date on November 15th and 16th. It will be in central London uh, in that mid-November timeframe. And of course, look forward to seeing everyone there. It's another great opportunity to network for our European community around the Appian platform. Now, of course, today we're going to be talking about Appian 23.2, which is, of course, the second release of 2023. Expect two additional releases for 23.3 release in August and 23.4 release coming up in November. But with the 23.2 release, our customers will receive that as a GA software release on May 26 next week. So if you are a self-managed on-premise customer, you can go ahead and download that from the MyAppian support website and manage your own installation. All of our cloud customers will receive notification of scheduling those upgrades to the latest version with, on that release date of May 26. So look forward to getting everyone's hands then. But let's jump into the content. And of course, to reinforce the vision of what Appian is trying to bring forward is a platform for end-to-end -end process automation. We really focus on bringing all the tools together to allow you to design, automate, and optimize any business process in your organization and managing end-to-end -end workflows and that drive automation as well. Now, today we're going to be covering in this order our total experience features for user experience, automation capabilities, data fabric, and process mining. Supported by our low-code design, admin, cloud, and support, and of course, Appian community environment as well. So let's jump right into our total experience capabilities with Appian 23.2. And first of which is a relatively minor feature, but a nice little enhancement around the supervisor field being displayed on user profile cards. So the supervisor field is a metadata property associated with the users that allows you to see their reporting structure. And of course, Appian has a fantastic org chart reporting component as well to see that entire hierarchical reporting structure. Now, if you'd like to enable this, when you go into the admin and console, you'll see a permissions configuration inside there, which allows you to turn on which metadata attributes are going to be available. And with the 23.2 release, you're going to see a new option to turn on that supervisor field as available inside the user profile card. Also, with the uh, Appian's total experience, we also have some improvements on the file upload and signature improvements, specifically... Uh, you no longer need to use start forms or process workflows to upload documents. You can now submit them from any interface, whether a record view or report, to use a file upload or signature component outside of a process start form or task. Just use the ABANG submit upload files function. That function is going to be used inside the save into parameter of a submit button or a link action. So again, it's going to be a great feature if you just want to directly capture additional documents, you can go ahead and use that file upload component inside any interface. And then to commit those documents, simply use the submit uploaded files action on that link. 
or button control, and you don't have to initiate a process at all to upload that content. In addition, for mobile users, after uploading a file or signature in an offline enabled task, users can now save the task as a draft, allowing them to edit and complete the task at a later time. So if you're capturing rich media content like signatures and like images, again, they can go back while offline, update that information, and of course, change it by, before submitting it when they return back online. So nice minor feature improvement for our mobile users. We also improve the overall design performance, or sorry, the performance of our design mode. So of course, Appian's interface designer experience has two modes, design mode and expression mode. We love trying to convert all you expression mode loyalists over to our design mode for that rapid productivity. And we have one more reason to do it, of course, and we'll have a few more coming up later. Design mode, of course, allows you to visually drag and drop and never have to see kind of expression logic inside of there. So really saves a lot of time and obscures some of that expression coding logic away to make it a nice intuitive experience. Now, in addition, we also like to do some minor improvements like position icons and buttons. You'll see a new parameter on the button control, allowing you to position that either at the end or start. So you can make those nice little carrot callouts as we see example here to add a little bit more design element to those button controls. In addition, we've also streamlined configuration from the design library. So if you're not familiar with the design library, we introduced this in 23.1. So you can go back and check out that webinar if you want to learn more. Design library, though, of course, allows admins to create a reusable library of components to reinforce things like design standards or reusable components unique to your organization. Now, the design library, when you drag and drop one of these components, we made a little bit of enhancement here to automatically map process variables of the same name between the two systems. So speeds up the mapping very quickly as well as oftentimes you have test values associated with interfaces rules. So we can automatically load those test values. So when you insert it, it can automatically work without having to prompt it with any data or think about what those test values are. Now, a real improvement here for design mode to go back to that theme is to create and rename local variables inside design mode. Now, this is a big reason why a lot of people like using expression mode is you can do that ABANG local variables and declare those locally scoped variables. They want to do some dynamic working inside that content. Now, the uh, design mode now has the ability to create local variables on the fly from an interface. The great feature allows you to kind of not have to jump into expression mode. Now, on top of that, if you don't already have the ABANG local variables function declared to start building those local variables, you don't need to do it. It'll automatically create that for you. So let's actually take a look at this. We'll swipe over to my interface designer experience and go ahead and say, maybe build a sample interface. I'll go to this test one. So if I go to expression mode right now, I see I have a form layout and pretty straightforward section layout. Now, if I go to design mode, oftentimes if I want to add local variables, I have to go to expression mode and add those. Now, Instead, I can go ahead and say, let's go ahead and declare some local variables and go ahead and say, you know, I'm going to say first name is going to be a local variable to create. And of course, maybe I also want to do last name. And we anticipate that you want to do these a lot in a row. So we'll do address as well. So now I have these three local variables working. I can go ahead and say drag and drop a text field and then easily map that just like this to those local variables. Very nice and intuitive. But the really cool thing is in expression mode, it automatically knew to wrap that entire form inside my local variables right there as well. So um, there we go. We can uh, easily now not have to jump into expression mode, not have to worry about figuring out where that goes, but build those dynamic local variables on the fly. And they work just like rule inputs where if I need to go ahead and change the name or modify them, I can go ahead and click them right there. It'll automatically change all references throughout the entire interface as well. So great little addition feature on handling local variables. So moving on, uh, for those of you though who love expression editor mode, one of those little challenges would be is remembering all those icon names inside the product. Oftentimes when I do this, I got to go to the product documentation to remember what exactly was the name of that icon. So inside expression mode now when building interfaces, you'll see this nice little button here that's a little star that allows you to have the entire expression uh, icon library right there. So you don't have to memorize the names. Go ahead and type in what you want 
it'll quickly add that specific icon name to whichever interface you want. So nice little enhancement. Don't keeps you having to go into product documentation and look these things up. Now, moving on to our next area, of course, I'd like to remind everyone that if you're looking for inspiration, design.appian.com is the best place to go. That's going to give you a lot of design tips and inspiration how to start building things. Now, we have a lot of code segments in here that you can copy and load inside the Interface Designer. To make that even easier, we've added a copy expression button, which is going to copy it to your local computer cache and allow you to paste inside the Interface Designer so you can get that same interface that you're looking at right inside of your own local design experience as well. So check it out at design.appian.com to go ahead and get some inspiration going for yourself. Now we have a lot more to come with our total experience section, but for this next section, I'd like to tee up Sahithi Mankala to talk about our latest capabilities around portals and sites. So Sahithi, over to you. Thanks, Malcolm. Hi everyone, I'm Sahithi Mankala and I'm a product manager at Appian. I'm excited to talk about some of the great enhancements we've made to our total experience offering that involve Appian portals and sites across both web and mobile. Let's take a look at what you can look forward to getting from Appian Portals and Sites in this release. We're going to start with some seamless navigation changes that we've made to both sites and portals. This release, we're delivering on one of your top requests, more pages. We're happy to share that you can now add up to 10 pages to your site or portal, giving you the flexibility you need to provide a strong and engaging experience to your users. This allows you to easily design sites and portals that meet your users' needs, no matter how complex. Whether your site has three pages or 10, we wanna make sure your users can navigate with ease. For browsers, if the page titles can't comfortably fit in the header bar, they're automatically moved to a recognizable three-line menu icon. And for Appian Mobile users, all of your site's pages can be accessed directly in the app, so your users will always have a streamlined experience. As you can see, we've made some powerful improvements to the navigation of your sites and portals. Beyond that, we've also been working to improve both the portal's user experience and developer experience. We strive to consistently provide new ways to personalize your portal's user experience, and this release contains an update that we know you'll love, custom domains. Now, you can configure your portal with a custom domain to match your existing web addresses. This allows your portal to effortlessly fit into your web ecosystem, creating a more cohesive user experience between systems. In addition to our investments in the user experience, we're also making it easier than ever to work with record data in portals. In 23.1, we introduced the ability to query records from portals. This release, we've made it even easier for you to create beautiful data visualizations. Now, you can instantly unlock the power of records when you choose one as the data source for a chart, whether it's a scatter chart or a bar chart, card choice, or a read-only grid in your portal. On top of that, the record data and related record data functions are now fully supported in portals. With records-powered components, displaying data in your portal is straightforward and more natural than ever. With the support of records-powered grids and portals, you can let your users harness the value from the data using the grid's built-in capabilities like data export, user filters, and search. This is perfect for your portals that display metrics or dashboards. With these changes, you can continue to use the power of Appian Data Fabric in your portals to enable easy access to valuable information and insights fast. Additionally, we've expanded our portal object design guidance to help you quickly identify potential publishing issues caused by any incompatible functions. We'll alert you when one of your portal precedents is using a function that's incompatible, so that you can save development time and easily refactor your expressions before publishing. We're also making it simple to monitor your portal with two new portal-specific logs. The Portal Error CSV log allows you to identify where and why users are seeing errors in a portal, and the Portal Details CSV log shows you a performance breakdown for every interface in your portal. With all these changes we've introduced, you'll also notice that we drastically speed up your portal development with faster portal republishing times. Republishing your portals now only takes under a minute, empowering you to rapidly iterate and improve on your portal designs. Last but certainly not least, portals are now also included under the Appian Platform's High Trust Certification. Use portals to capture secure health information and get the peace of mind that comes with the industry standard certification for HIPAA compliance. 
With all of our Total Experience updates this release, we're continuing to serve our critical capabilities of designing UX in a low-code way, operating on any device including web and mobile, engaging a diverse set of users, and allowing you to deploy with confidence. And now back over to you, Malcolm, to take a look at what else we can look forward to in this release. Cool, thank you, Sahithi. And that's, of course, some great updates. Encourage everyone to, of course, check out some of that information we saw in design.appian.com and look forward to playing with these features when we release it next Friday, May 26th. To transition, we're gonna now introduce Gabby Rothschild, product manager level two, to cover the latest updates we have around process automation. So Gabby, let me tee up back over to you. Thanks, Malcolm. My name is Gabby Rothschild, and I'm excited to present on behalf of Process Automation today and tell you about some exciting features that we have coming in 23.2. We're pleased to debut the AI skill in this release, a low-code way to build, train, and deploy machine learning models in your Appian apps. With AI skills, Appian makes high volume, repetitive, and routine tasks simple with AI. By reducing the need for human intervention, AI skills eliminate bottlenecks and allow your processes to proceed and complete faster. You'll also reduce the risk of human error and allow your team to focus on more impactful work. We are releasing three AI skills in 23.2 document classification, email classification, and document extraction. The training of AI skills will be done through a new design object. You simply have to pick the AI skill from the list of design objects, and then you'll see our AI skill palette. The AI skill palette contains the three AI skills in this release, document extraction, document classification, and email classification. The document classification AI skill enables you to automatically classify and route documents by uploading PDFs for training. By training your own model, the AI skill adapts to your business's data. After you've uploaded training documents of each type, all you have to do is click train and the AI skill takes care of the rest. Once training is complete, you'll see metrics that describe how well your model is performing. For example, in the screenshot here, you can see that this model was 100% accurate. We also provide advanced metrics to dive deeper into your model's performance. If you're not familiar with these metrics, check out our documentation. The AI skill allows you to keep experimenting and training new models until you're ready to use one in your process. Train new models in your AI skill and keep track of your models in the unpublished models section. When you're ready to use a model in your process, hit publish. This makes it available to be invoked via a smart service. With the email classification AI skill, you can build a custom machine learning model that classifies emails based on business specific labels, making it easy to route email messages to the correct team or aid in case creation. This new skill improves efficiency for your email related tasks and allows you to focus on action rather than organization. Just upload EML files for each type and click train. To ingest emails into your Appian applications, we recommend the use of mail polar plugins like the MS Graph email polar plugin, which is available on the app market. The MS Graph mail polar will pull emails from your Exchange server and store EML files within the Appian document system, as well as transform your emails into structured data. The document extraction AI skill enables you to automatically extract important text from structured and semi-structured documents so that you can easily use that data in your applications with little manual effort. The AI skill transforms Appian's existing document extraction capabilities into a guided and low code experience for Appian developers. After Appian extracts text from documents, you'll be able to deploy your reconciliation data to other environments alongside your AI skill object. AI skills are a faster, simpler way to classify documents and extract data from them. We encourage customers to transition from the intelligent document processing application to using AI skills. When you're ready to use your AI skill in your process, add a new smart service that corresponds to your AI skills type. For example, to classify documents, just find the classify documents smart service 
and set up that smart service to use your design object with the published model. After that, you can configure inputs like the confidence threshold. Because the AI skill uses Appian's smart services and a design object, you can integrate the AI skill with DevSecOps. Deploy your AI skill across environments after training in a lower environment, analyze dependencies, and build custom monitoring dashboards to evaluate performance. Moving on to robotic process automation, in this release, we've made it easier to automate RPA use cases involving Microsoft Excel. We're excited to announce the release of two low-code Excel modules that will make it easier to handle Microsoft Excel files. This means that in addition to the existing Appian and plugin capabilities, you can now use Appian RPA to read from, write to, and format your Excel files. Please go to our docs to learn more about the many ways to use Excel with Appian. If you find that RPA is the right capability to support your use case, there are two modules for you to choose from. You should use the Excel License Required module if you have to handle more advanced operations in Excel. This module not only includes basic actions like reading and writing data to Excel, but also includes additional actions that allow you to tailor your spreadsheets to your exact needs and preferences. For instance, you can run macros that are embedded in your Excel workbooks as well as merge and format cells to specify alignment and color. We're excited to see the Excel use cases you can now automate with these new RPA low-code actions. In addition to Excel, we've added some new low-code actions to the browser module that make it easier to automate some of the most common interactions you have with a browser. For instance, you'll now be able to more easily extract data from web tables as well as detect and interact with browser alerts. Be sure to check out the documentation for more tips on how to properly use these new low-code actions. Finally, we've upgraded the encryption level of RPA credentials from AES-128 to AES-256, making RPA even more secure than before. This release, the Send Email Smart Service is even more flexible and configurable with two new customizable features. With Reply To addresses, you can leverage Appian's default address to send emails, while also controlling where to route replies. With control over where to send replies, you can more meaningfully connect with your users. This release, we're giving you the flexibility to connect even more databases. Now, you can seamlessly connect to any external database that supports the JDBC protocol. Just configure a new JDBC connected system to use with a SQL integration object and you're ready to go. We encourage you to get started today with the Automation Kickstart. Contact your account executive to learn more about the Automation Kickstart for both RPA and IDP. Our automation experts will provide free assessments and ROI analysis to help identify use cases, validate use cases, and help you through your automation journey. Back to you, Malcolm. Cool, thank you, Gabby. And of course, encourage everyone to check out the Automation Kickstart. It's a great program if you're a customer looking to where to apply. It's a great program. It provides you free consultation services to uh, learn how to apply that. With that, of course, we're going to transition over to talk about Appian's data fabric. Now, Appian introduced this data fabric architecture the past several releases. and We've seen fantastic adoption to accelerate development and manage really composite data sources. We focus on our ability to discover your enterprise data, unify in a virtualized data model, then apply security and optimization to that data as well for building applications that support your real-time needs. Now, we're going to transition a bit to talk a bit more about not just data fabric, but also how we're combining data fabric with our process mining offering. Our process mining focuses on discovering how people actually use your digital technology and check for conformance, identify root cause of issues, and take action on the insights to drive continuous process improvement. Now, to help with this topic and to talk about the high-level vision as well as the new features coming on 23.2, I'm going to invite Frank Lee to the uh, stage here, we'll say, and have him walk through, of course, our latest innovations in Appian's data fabric architecture, as well as process mining together. So, Frank, pass it over to you. All right. Thank you. Hi, my name is Frank Lee. I'm a manager of product management here at Appian. And I'm excited today to go through what we're launching for data fabric and process mining. 
In 23.2, we've simplified and reorganized the record type navigation on the left side of a screen. This simplification will enable you to find the configurations you need faster to more intuitively build your records. We are also introducing codeless record action security. Over the last few releases, we've made it easier than ever to secure your enterprise data with codeless record level security and record view security. Now with this release, we are bringing those experiences to configuring record actions as well, making the entire security configuration process on a record codeless. After selecting the record action that you want to modify security settings, you can select user groups, users found in group fields, or a combination of the two to set record security. Then you can specify when the action appears. Once you're done, your security configurations are displayed in plain language so it's easy to understand and maintain your configurations. We've also centralized all aspects of record action security. With process model security now shown in the record type, you can adjust the permissions of the process model powering the record action all in one place. We are also providing broader database coverage for codeless data modeling. Last year, we introduced codeless data modeling, giving you the ability to create new record type database source from scratch for MariaDB. Now you can leverage that same power for data in Oracle, SQL Server, or MySQL databases. And now anytime you add, delete, or update a record field, we'll do all the heavy lifting to reflect those changes in your data source. In this release, we are very excited to introduce record events. With record events, we make it easier than ever to log the important milestones and events that occur for your business processes with no data modeling required. We're taking an existing best practice for application design and making it a native capability. This will then allow you to seamlessly display the event history of any record on any interface. Record events will also allow all of your applications to be instantly ready to mine without any other data configuration required. We would encourage everyone to use record events in their business critical applications. To configure record events, simply select the record in which you want to generate events for. In a few clicks, you can then define the types of events that you want to capture and automatically have new related records created. Now, we understand many of you are already capturing event data in your applications. If this is the case, you can simply link the records representing your events to the record in which you want to capture events for. This will allow you to take advantage of all of the native capabilities of record events going forward. After setting up record events, you can then capture events across your workflows using the Write Record Smart Service which allows you to both write updates to your record and write event data at the same time. Here, you can define the record, the type of event that you want to write, and we will automatically log user and timestamp context for you. If you create additional fields within your event record, you can also log custom metadata to each event write, giving you richer data to use for mining and record keeping. In addition to writing record events and workflows, you can also configure your record actions to natively log events. This provides further coverage for ad hoc events that may occur even outside of workflows. After capturing events, we make it seam seamless for you to display your event audit history. It will be displayed by default in any generated record views giving your users easy access to view the history of the record. You can also display them on any interface using our tailor-made event history list component. Style your event history as a timeline or as a list to show a history of the events that occurred for a particular record. Now, it's easier than ever to use Data Fabric to natively define, log, and display events. But that's not all. Record Events also allows you to be instantly able to mine your business processes. 
This event data can also be loaded directly into process mining, generating a discovered model and opening the door to all kinds of analysis opportunities to discover bottlenecks and inefficiencies. We now make it easier than ever to get set up for process mining. You can also leverage event information stored in other systems using our data fabric, giving you an end-to-end -end view of your business process. We believe that you should use this feature in every application that matters to you or your customer's business, as it will lay the foundation for many exciting capabilities on our roadmap. Speaking of process mining, we have designed a new program called Insight to Action to ensure your success in continuously improving your processes with Appian. This does not require record events as our data scientists will help set up the data pipeline. Insight to Action is a simple one-time fixed fee program for process optimization that creates recurring savings. In the Insight phase, Appian will perform the assessment and data transformations required for process mining, complete the analysis, and provide a findings report with recommendations. In the action phase, Appian will create a project plan addressing the findings, design an optimized workflow, implement the new process, and then rerun process mining to validate the improvement. Digital transformation projects can take forever, especially when relying on traditional manual methods of managing their success. With Insight to Action, we dramatically reduce the time and effort required by bundling our technologies and expert services into a single offering. You should see a pop-up on your screen. You can click the link to learn more. Separately from the Insight to Action offering, we are also excited to announce the launch of our Process HQ Early Access Program. Process HQ is a beta capability that reimagines the process mining within the Appian platform. It is built for business users with no prior context of process mining needed and is SOC 2 compliant. Our early access program starts in early July of this year and consists of two products, Process HQ and Low Code Data Prep. We are currently taking applications and evaluating customers for this launch of early access. You can click the pop up on your screen to learn more and sign up and express interest in the early access program. As part of the Early Access Program, we are reimagining the data pipeline and preparation experience. In cases where you want to mine data outside of record events, we provide powerful capabilities natively within our platform to help you transform and load that data. With our new low-code data prep tool, we will be able to support a full range of transformations, joins, and data cleansing activities to help you join data across the various systems in your enterprise to allow you to mine your processes from end to end. We are also launching Process HQ as part of the Early Access Program. Process HQ provides the tools to allow anyone, even those with zero process mining experience, to discover meaningful process insights in a short period of time. We do so by providing a guided, intuitive experience, automatically quantifying the factors that lead to the highest impacts on cycle time. In addition, Process HQ automatically measures and provides automation insights to show you where you can use automation more effectively. We also provide capabilities to share and collaborate with others on insights, helping your business to validate findings and act on next steps. Let's take a look at this in action. Here, we see the main landing page for Process HQ. This is a list of mined processes that a user would have access to. In this example, we'll take on the role of a business analyst who is supporting their company's mortgage origination process. We'll go ahead and click on that process. And next, we'll see an overview of the process with a key high level, with a few high level KPIs, a few graphs displaying case duration trend over time and distribution, and a visual of the discovered model. At this point, we'll go ahead and launch a new analysis to find insightful impacts on what is causing higher cycle time. On this page, we provide automated recommendations for what is causing higher cycle times within your process. We analyze a range of factors, including attributes, repetitions, activities, and paths, and show you quantitatively 
What is taking longer? Some of these key factors may be expected. For example, jumbo loans taking longer is expected since it goes through additional reviews. In this case, we'll hop over to our second key factor of state equals Georgia. Upon expanding this, we can see that when the state is Georgia, processes are taking five days, one hour longer for originations than average, and speeding up these cases to match the average could save almost 6,000 days annually. This is an interesting takeaway for us, so we'll go ahead and add this factor and figure out why mortgage originations are taking so long in Georgia. The analysis now automatically updates and provides a new set of key factors. Here we can see that the appraisals activity is taking almost twice as long in Georgia as it does on average. Out of the nearly 6,000 days of potential savings, about 5,000 of them are just for this one activity in Georgia. This is interesting to us, so we'll go ahead and add this as a factor as well. And now we'll look at the root cause of why appraisals are taking longer in Georgia. Once again, the analysis updates, and the next factor that we see is automated valuation model equals false. It looks like the majority of appraisals in Georgia are not going through the automated valuation model, but more through a manual process, causing higher cycle times. This is the bottleneck that we've been looking for. Let's go ahead and add this as a factor to our analysis. At this stage, perhaps none of the other key factors are of particular business relevance to us. We can go ahead and save this insight. Go ahead and save it here and give it a name. You can add optionally add comments and we'll also go ahead and select a collaborator. After saving this insight, we can reference back to the insight as well as a list of other saved insights to recap and follow up on next steps. Viewing the saved insights here, we can see a summary of what we just discovered. In addition to the annual savings potential that can be realized and we have a place to, to collaborate and add comments to follow up. We can also go ahead and define the target duration. Perhaps at this stage, we determine that we want to improve these processes, not to the average of four days and two hours for the appraisal activity, but using automation, we can actually improve it perhaps to two days. However, we don't think we can improve all of these to be automated. We can only improve perhaps 40%. We can set these and run a lightweight simulation on what kind of savings could be achieved under these certain scenarios. All right, that wraps up for this section. Back to you, Malcolm. Cool, thank you, uh, Frank. That was fantastic. And of course, feel free to follow those pop-up offers that were shared earlier if you'd like to express interest in that Process HQ Early Access Program. We are looking for several customers to be working with to refine those capabilities to bring that forward in a future GA release to all of our customers in the future. To continue, let's move on to our low-code design capabilities being introduced in Appian 23.2. The first of which is updates to our IDE to make it easier to move application artifacts between applications. So now when you're inside a specific application, you maybe have a few objects you wanna put into a shared library or move them to a different app, you can simply select those actions, choose the move dropdown. You see that now move to app option to go ahead and move that to another location or another application container inside the system. So a small ease of use improvement. Also, when it comes to deployments inside the Appian product, we made it easier to find specific details around specific deployments with a search menu filter. So this will be in the deployments tab inside the Appian IDE experience, allowing you to quickly search by keyword to find specific deployments and exactly the status of those. Along with deployments, we also improve the ABANG deployment function it has been expanded to retrieve information about reviews for external and direct deployments. So if you have deployments coming in either from Jenkins or from Azure DevOps or from our native CI CD capabilities, the ABANG deployment function allows you to retrieve additional metadata with 23.2 or on the exact reason why maybe a deployment was rejected or the comments from a specific user in the governance council who um, provide reasoning of why that maybe was turned back or approved. Now, moving on to our admin cloud and supports capabilities and inside the same theme of deployments, 
We now support uh, deploying admin console settings via the deployments API. So as a reminder, Appian does provide an API for integrating the DevSecOps of Appian apps into Jenkins, Azure DevOps, or other CIC uh, dev tools. With a 23.2 release, the deployments API now also supports admin console settings being automatically deployed to target systems via these uh, third-party tools. So that might be things like user start pages, permissioning, authentication, credential configurations to your single sign-on systems, all those admin level settings can now be automatically pushed to your production or test environments. Now, previously in the 22.4 release from last year, we announced our support for PIEE for specifically US DOD and federal customers using Appian for procurement and acquisitions management. Now, many of our customers use us for end-to-end -end acquisitions and procurement in the government space. And to make that even easier, we've enhanced the 22.4 release to now this 23.2 to have a simple point-and-click configuration for setting up single sign-on with the PIEE authentication engine. So if you have such as third-party vendors or the procurement officers using this specific authentication credential, you can natively stitch Appian to that to make it very easy to do federal procurement solutions on the Appian platform with integrated single sign-on. Now, we've also modernized our Java APIs for Java developers. These APIs provide a smoother performance, allowing for plugins more easily stored and retrieve files. So again, this only applies to Java developers creating plugins using the Java API. We specifically update the document, content services, and copy reference APIs with new methods, which make it easier to work with files and stream files into the Appian system. So, Look forward to getting that in your hands. You might want to revisit maybe if you're working with existing plugins that use document manipulation. Might want to take a look at these and how they might improve those plugins after the 23.2 release is out. And finally, with Appian 23.2 updates with a product, we've also made it improved to, or sorry, improve to send secure authenticated emails. The emails are now sent from any Appian managed domain, include domain key identified mail, DKIM signatures to help keep communication secure. So again, nothing you need to do specifically on your part. This will go into effect for again, any of those Appian managed domains to include these DKI DKIM signatures. And finally, outside of Appian, we also support, of course, our My Appian environment, which is your support center for managing and monitoring the health of your Appian infrastructure. Part of the Appian, My Appian experience is reviewing health check findings. Health check is a, a very important tool to use for the regular sanitization of your application design architecture. Highly encourage you to be using regular health checks to make sure that you're scanning for any high risk or medium risk issues. Now, health checks include the ability to do high risk, medium risk, low risk identifications. Of course, those low risk ones are simply minor suggestions and improvements. They're not really directly important to the application runtime. So we made it easier to simply filter out or show those low risk items with a simple filter, allowing you to really focus your attention on the high and medium risk items that you might wanna be addressing in your application designs. Now that closes out our release for 23.2, but before we end, I'd like to transition over to April Schuchel. Of course, April is our senior product evangelist as well as a developer advocate for our entire community. So I'm gonna pass it over to April to cover some of these updates with the Appian Community Program. So over to you, April. Thank you, Malcolm. Let's jump right into it. I'd like to start with a reminder that the app market is an amazing resource for developers. Along with updates and enhancements to the apps that you already know and love, there are always new plugins, utilities, and solutions to check out. We added 50 in Q1 alone, and I'd like to highlight two new plugins that we added. Our OpenAI Connected System and OpenAI ChatGPT component plugins allow you to harness the potential of generative AI right within your Appian applications. From enhancing process automations to generating text and even adding a chatbot that answers queries directly into your interfaces, the possibilities are limitless. CTO Mike Beckley showed a demo of these capabilities during his Product Vision keynote at Appian World. You can find and watch the recording in our Appian event video repository in the learn area of appian.com. The product vision keynote was one of many exciting things that we had at Appian World. 
This year at Appian World, we put our community and developers in the spotlight. We brought back and beefed up our community hub. This drop by practitioner lounge was packed with Appian enthusiasts. We had many challenges using 23.2, solutions demos, learning resources, and more. We really leaned into the arcade theme with neon signs, a claw machine full of swag, and classic arcade games like Ms. Pac-Man. We're so excited to keep evolving the community hub at our future events. We also had our developer day. It included hands-on labs, exclusive sneak peeks, and practical knowledge aimed at making you a better Appian developer. We also recognized our certified developers and had an exclusive community MVP event. The biggest MVPs, of course, were our Live Build Challenge contestants. Our third annual Live Build Challenge was the biggest and best yet, closing out the conference on the main stage. Kin Lee, Polino, Anthony Caligiri, Molly Saul, Joshua Fisher, and Aparna Tripathi faced off on the main stage in front of thousands of cheering fans in person and virtually. In just one hour, these brave and talented Appian developers used the latest features in 23.2 to build an investigative case management portal, and the audience could actually go to those portals and use them to try and solve a crime. It was so exciting to watch six blank canvases become six unique and powerful applications in front of our eyes in just 60 minutes. It was a tight competition, but in the end, squeezing ahead with some extra UI points for adding a custom typeface to her portal, Molly Saul from Mastodon Technologies took home the $10,000 prize. If you missed the action, don't worry. The recording is available on the community YouTube channel. If you want to try it for yourself, you can download the use case requirements along with the requirements from all of our past live build challenges at community.appian.com slash challenges. These are great ways to test your Appian skills after making use of all the great learning resources that we have to practice with. Speaking of, we have some great new courses. We have two new build from scratch beginner tutorials, get football or soccer if you're in the US stats with RPA and ESG portal with process automation. We'll send out a new version of that, including AI skill in June. And we have two new courses on AI skill, introduction to AI skill and automate your business tasks with AI skills. We'll of course have our 23.2 release showcase. And as a reminder to certified users out there, staying up to date with the latest product features is required to maintain your certification. Along with these online courses, we will be hosting another live stream and it will be around AI skills. On June 1st, I will be joined by Lewis Prensky, Senior Product Manager, and Kyle Miller, Product Evangelist, to showcase AI skill designer. Join us live to watch a demo and ask any questions you may have. Make sure that you subscribe to the Appian Community YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload or a live stream. That's all from me. Back to you, Malcolm. Cool. Thank you so much, April. And that concludes all the content we have for Appian 23.2. Thank you so much for joining. And of course, look forward to future presentations coming up in August with our 23.3 release.